Hello, and welcome to the Mod Center Podcast Show. It's episode 65. Wunderbar! Yeah! Welcome to the Mod Center Podcast. This is Shepard from SocialDissonance.com, also known as Christian from Game Design Reviews, also known as Shepard from SocialDissonance.com. Hello, this is Noxella, also from SocialDissonance.com, and also my name is Putty, and I am wearing no pants. And we are two of four of two Monster Hunters uh, working to create a two divided by four podcast on the second month of the year 2012. Just trying to get it done. <laughs> it's half as good as what it used to be. <laughs> I think that's kind of an overstatement. Um, so the only thing we're, we're good at and we're not even all that good at is fighting monsters. So that's all you're getting this uh, out of this podcast. Don't look for any comedy outside of the incidental, uh, maybe futile attempts at us trying to kill things. Yeah, we don't have Christian or Nick to fall back on, so... Um, while it's loading, Axel, do you have a question for us? Uh, yes, yes, I do. This question is from Cole Requiem on uh, Formspring. And Cole asks, if a Monster Hunter game isn't released to the West this year, what will Iron Beard do for a job? Oh, you know, that's a great question. Um, I might have some unique, rare insight on Iron Beard. Uh, Iron Beard is somebody that does actually actively... You know, he, he's an active actor. I think he works for, like, a theater company or something like that in the area of Capcom. And, like, they found him. And, of course, they're, like, they're stoked to work with him. And they probably would use him in the future. Mm -hmm. But he's probably got work on his own. Yeah, I believe it. Uh, most actors tend to have, like, a ton of repertoire for either theater acting or some other type of acting job. I mean, an Iron Beard could just, like, murder like monsters anyways like, yeah. he's not anything to worry about yeah he's oh um I'm putting him to sleep okay at least that's the plan that's the plan that's the plan <laughs> oh my god right how did I not head. get hit oh my god oh my god <laughs> you're good that was amazing people are gonna call me out on hacks for that <laughs> it's okay it's happened to me uh don't hit him don't hit him oh I got enough to sleep. I don't know. I won't hit him when he falls asleep. I just want to get my spirit gauge. Okay. Did you get it? Okay, I think the bombs are over here, so I'm going to try and grab them. Uh, and then I guess I'll freeze. Oh, yeah, hey, I got high speed gathering. That's sweet. <laughs> it's actually kind of effective in the arena. Yeah. Wait, can you hit it? I hope that works. Yeah, good. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Oh no. Oh, he went right into it. Almost dead. That's okay. He's in, he's in shock track. He's gonna come out right now. Oh, oh, this is a golden regime. What? What's the difference? Oh, because he's sparking. Um, he also started gold and just went into rage. Uh, they they have more health and are stronger. So that, yeah, the, the other ones we were fighting weren't weren't golden regimes, were they? Nope, they were normal. Like they they started black, or they started gold and then went black. Oh. Yeah. I didn't I didn't know that difference. I mean, I knew there were golden regimes. I didn't really know how to differentiate them at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, it also has the reverse effect on the pitfalls, so you can only oh, so you can only pitfall them when they're uh, not rage. Right. Oh. But he'll he'll always stay gold, right? Yep. He just gets shiny when he 
goes into rage. It just gets Super Saiyan 2. Super and Saiyan. then, of course, in Frontier, they go Super Saiyan 3. Oh, yeah. So they stay in 2, and then they go to 3? Uh, I forget. I haven't watched the video in a while. No. Is that a HR 999 quest? Yes, it is. <laughs> it's gotta be like... You gotta be such a neckbeard in order to get to that. Well, aren't you almost there? Uh, I'm like halfway there. 400 HR in a weekend? Uh, no, it was 200 HR in a weekend. Or was it 300? I forget. It was a lot. It, it was... You know, I was hoping for more, too. <laughs> Uh, there's only so much Cheetos and Mountain Dew someone can consume. Delicious. Oh, by the way, I don't I don't eat or drink any of that. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the record, um, a middle-aged man has to be kind of careful about what he eats and drinks. Uh, and those those are no longer options. <laughs> if you want to not be more with the obese. That stuff stays with you. <laughs> Like the closer you get to thirty, like the more consequences in life you, you find are, are readily apparent, and the the ravages you do to your body are all too easily to see. You know, they just they start happening. Like, that's, like that's, that's true. Like if you hurt something, like you hurt your elbow or you hurt your knee, like that just happened. Like that's gonna that's gonna stick with you for a little while. Oh yeah, such is so, the curse of getting old. Yep. Yep. Yeah, but that's kind of a weird thing about Japan is their perception of middle age is is far different than ours. Like, I think they expect people like to get older a lot faster than they really do. Like, you know, Game Center CX, like Arena was middle aged at like just just a little over thirty. Mm-hmm. It's not that old. Oh, whatever. Well, different cultures, different societies. Have you? Yeah. yeah. So I'm beefing up my uh, Japanese knowledge as well. Uh, because I am a weeaboo. <laughs> and uh, it's actually, it's very handy to at least be able to know, um, what is it, the uh, Furigana, I think? Um, it just, it makes it so much easier. If you can just sound things out, and you have a general knowledge of what the monsters are in the game, then it's not a huge deal to kind of figure out what you need to do next. But uh, their, their alphabet is weird. You know how their alphabet works, right, Maxella? Uh, nope, I'm not Japanese. Um, uh, I thought maybe it was new. Um, so they've got three main systems. Two of them are sound exactly the same. They just have different symbols because one is for Japanese words and the other one is for uh, foreign words. Okay. Or maybe, I think, um, like, onomatopoeia sort of stuff, like, you know, like, Sounds and stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then they also, of course, have the uh, kana, which are the uh, Chinese loan characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, you know, if you know some Chinese, it would probably help a little bit. But, you know, that that isn't a, a main form of how they, they communicate in writing. Right. Usually they mix it together. Right. Usually you've got a mix of the, um, what, phono, phonosyllabic, words and then of course the uh, kind of words so you know Monster Hunter uses all three plus you know English words as well or English letters mm-hmm. so stuff you gotta figure out yeah understandable uh, this past weekend Capcom streamed some cool stuff with Dragon's Dog oh yeah how does that look compared to Monster Hunter um well, prior to the stream, I kind of thought it was like a, going to be mediocre, and I didn't really consider it uh, as something that I'd want to buy. But uh, they showed off a lot of gameplay elements, and I think either one of the producers or the director came on and played a bit, and it looks really cool. Like, uh, there's one thing you can do where... You can pick up enemies, and you can throw them. So <laughs> that sounds kind of fun. If I mean, that's a good start. Oh yeah, and if you're on a castle, because there are various castle and like fort defense uh, quests, and you can throw dudes off of them. So like, <laughs> say there are a bunch of goblins, you can knock one down, pick them up, chuck them off, and they'll go flying. Well, how how um. How big are the fights in the game? Like, how many things can you fight at once? Uh, you see on the screen. One of one of the things that uh, the 
the stream showed was a fort defense quest, and it was like a huge invasion of goblins, cyclopses, and other things that all came into the base. And I'm not sure if there was a spawn limit, because little guys just kept coming in. Hmm. Now, I was under rest in peace. I was under the impression that the game had no multiplayer. Is that true? Uh, yeah, that's true. Although they, it, they they do have a thing where um, you can like download other players' characters. Right, right. It, it's in a it's in a way that's similar to like the cats from Monster Hunter. Uh, <laughs> Except you're downloading people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> Where that? They're called pawns, so it's okay. One day they will cross the board and become a queen. Ooh. You don't have to become a queen. I mean, sometimes you might want to become a knight. No, that's bad. You're a queen. Well, I mean, I mean, you're right. A queen would be best 99% of the time. But you never know. No, I kind of. No, um, I'm running really low on ammunition that's worth using. Oh my. <laughs> this is kind of bad. This is Gold Rajang. Um, yeah, I don't know why they would give you a bowgun that has pure shots and can only load two at a time. I mean, That's the arena. That seems like cheating. Okay. <laughs> I don't even... There's like well. a really... <laughs> Wait. How many times can we die? Uh, I don't know. Maybe five or seven? What? What? Some, why would it... Some of the arena quests are just like that. Like in Try, some of the... We've got... We've got so many deaths still available to us. Doesn't oh, is well, whatever. No, we've got three. No, we've got three thousand more, dude. <laughs> we've got we've got a lot more dying to do. Oh my god! Uh, that's good to know. <laughs> this is so stupid. What the heck? There's a trap in one of the one of the gathering spots if you want. Uh, well, I mean, that's probably a good way for me to remain at least semi-useful. Oh, 10 minutes. Oh, God. Oh, hey. Wow, that was amazing. Oh, my God. That was the best shot ever. Um, That was very handy. Uh, I I'm just going to use my Pierce one-shots, and then once I use those, I'll, I'll do something. I don't know. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of dying to do before we fail this quest. I mean, that's just like... It it's, more it's more like a race against time than anything else. Yeah, that's how some of the group training things seem to be. Because I, I tried soloing um, a number of the group train quests that they have uh, just by default. And, like, the Kaku one is, like, a 5 or 10 minute limit. And your weapons and their health are skilled so that they would expect you to be doing it in a group. Uh, so it's really hard. I mean, were you able to clear it, or...? Yeah, I was able to clear it, but uh, a couple of times I came close to timing out. And then for the... There's the Kongalala one, and I timed out a couple of times for that one. Yeah. I mean, Kongalala just has so much life. Mm -hmm. It's like, what the heck? Like, I know he's a big monkey, but please, I mean, you know, it's not like he's got a banana. <laughs> he's going to be a hungry monkey. Oh, did I just do that to you? That's cool. I just did that. I was planning on that. Okay. He's easy to detonate it. Okay, so I have to remember that he goes from sparking to not sparking. I kept waiting for him to turn normal, and like that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> that just that doesn't. So, so what sort of quests are there in G rank that you can find the uh, Golden Rajong? I mean, he did, he's not in Final Invocation. There's just one. Um, I think it's called Child of Destruction. Okay, and then here. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I'm not sure of any others. There might be. One DLC, I think it's... Maybe not, I don't remember, but I think there might have been a DLC that's too Golden Regime. It's like Final Invitation. That... That that doesn't sound very fair. Oh, <laughs> well, that's why it's DLC. I mean, we have we have five more deaths between us, by the way, so we're, I mean, we're doing alright. Oh, really? We have that many? Yeah. Rare. Rare that Unite would afford you such... Uh, so, so many mistakes. <laughs> I mean, that means something. And, uh, by the way, this quest is limited to only two people, so it's not like they're expecting there to be four in this one. Alright, this is the small barrel bombs. It's the other place that has the traps, right? Yes. There's also, um, a Mega Potion Gathering. Well, I don't, I don't need Mega Potions, I mean. 
I'm just dying one hit. <laughs> <laughs> it's not entirely true, but it's not a lot of Alright, so he is just normal now, so I should drop my pitfall trap. Yeah. So go ahead and do that. Oh wow, I didn't. Oh yeah, I've got. Wow, that's fast. Yeah, he's in it. Get him. Sort of. Mm -hmm. Off to the side. I don't know what the deal with that is. Uh, Alright, so I'm kind of excited for Drag Dragon's Dogma now. When's it When's it due to come out? Uh, I, th I think it's May 24th, 25th. Somewhere around there. Uh, you know why that makes me a little depressed? Why? I mean, Monster of Tri was released in, what was it, April 2010? Yeah. It's going to go like three years. Alas. Like, really? Seriously? Well, I can tell you something that might make you happy about Dragon's Dogma. What, what's that? Is there a Rathos in it? If you light yourself on fire, if you touch other monsters, they get lit on fire too. Oh. Well, that's... <laughs> that's something I would like to see in this. You could, like, rub your blight off on monsters. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can climb a Cyclops while you're on fire, and he gets lit on fire too. Like, does it, like, start spreading across his body based on where you are? Uh, yeah, I think so. Like That's interesting. Mm-hmm. We've got four oh, more deaths, but only five it. minutes. Oh, he died. Did it. Good job. The cards are from you. Congratulations. Oh, we've got. But this is a this is a challenge quest. We don't get any cards. We got like mega potions, right? Like, what are you getting over there? Small golden fish. <laughs> <laughs> what is that Roger need golden fish for? Same reason why uh, Hermitar has mega potions or the keto jewels. Whatever it is. I like to imagine he was holding on to the golden fish in his hand the entire time. And carving it out of his stomach. Oh, he ate them. I bet they taste pretty good. They can't taste that bad. Oh, goldfish. The snack that smiles back. <laughs> They're biting their little heads off. <laughs> you know, I ate, I ate a fish head once. How was it? I mean, I didn't eat the entire thing, but I ate most of it. I ate every part of it that was edible. It was good. I would eat it again. My brother I ate it. My brother enjoys eating the meat behind the fish eye. I didn't know there was meat behind the fish eye. Yeah, I don't know. I've never tried it. It oh. doesn't look very appetizing to me. I, I ate a duck head once, too. Oh. Right, we've got one fan that's going to be very upset at us. <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> Rest in pieces uh, in my stomach. Yeah, I won't, I won't get into the details with that one. Um, all right, so let's do one more. We'll do a... Um... So here's a certain G-Rank exclusive monster. In fact, a Monster Hunter Freedom Unite exclusive monster, as far as I know. Right? He doesn't show up anywhere else, does he? Uh, I don't know. I don't really know the lineup, the full lineup for uh, Frontier. Um... Yeah, Frontier is interesting in that it doesn't have nearly as many new monsters from Unite as you would expect it to have. Mm -hmm. In fact, it doesn't have. I mean, the only thing it really shares are the ones like what, uh, Volganos, Lavazioth, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call them. Hypnock. Hypnock. Uh... Which, by the way, Hypnock is a total loser in in Unite, but he's actually, he's got some decent stuff going on in Frontier. I don't know if they have different moves, or just I've never had a problem with them. Was that where he is? Yep. Um, yeah, the hardcore version of Hypnock, he's just spraying sleep everywhere. <laughs> you can't stop, you can't stop spreading sleep. He just does it all the time. Have you fought the event, Hypnock? Which one? There's like a lot of them. Right? Uh -oh. There's There's one gigantic if not <laughs> no I have not fought that one although it sounds pretty fun yeah I, I remember uh, Amald showed some screen caps and it's like bigger than world eater probably <laughs> that's delightful oh my god I want to see that <laughs> so badly yeah. this is this guy seems like kind of tiny like I feel kind of bad like hurting him Okay. It doesn't seem very large for a monster. He'll throw rocks at you. Yeah, he, I actually find him easier than normal Bulgonga. What do you think? Mm, I don't know. I think they're about the same. 
he, I think he spends a lot more time throwing stuff, and so he stands still a lot more. Yeah, I can see that. That's what I, I mean. That's how I always felt about it. You know, he doesn't spend as much time hopping around. He's always like blowing sand at you or throwing a rock at you, and it's like those are things like I don't mind. Like I'm just gonna stand to your side and poke you in the butt. Yeah, uh, I think they try to compensate that with that um, in his defenses because you can bounce a lot on like his arms and whatnot. Uh, if you don't have uh, purple sharpness or ESP or what have you. Yeah. Uh, maybe white. I'm not sure. And he he also, I'm not sure, but I think he doesn't take too much elemental damage uh, besides from his tail and his face. No, uh, I mean there's a lot of monsters that are like that, anyways. What does he get weak against? Uh, ice or water? Ice. I do. It's funny how they they've got like uh, subspecies that are basically opposites of the others. Yeah, I like that. All right, there's your one paralysis. I'm not sure how many more I can get outside of this. <laughs> I mean, he'll probably be dead, right? Maybe. One would hope. Oh well, I'm bouncing on oh. his hind legs with uh, white sharpness only. Yep. So there we go. There's our there's our answer. Although I have white sharpness, the muscle are great sweet. What you using you camels? Yep. That is white white sharpness. Uh, I have sharpness up. Okay, but you must have like just a sliver or two. Yep, but it's not a big deal because it's a great sword. Yeah. I guess I should just not aim for his legs. That would be the smart thing to do rather than just have to worry about sharpening all. So my current goal is to try and just amass a uh, sizable amount of hardcore weapons. Mm-hmm. I mean, otherwise you're just going to spend forever using crappy weapons. I mean, you're pretty much stuck to doing that once you unlock your style rank. Um, the bonus, of course, being that hardcore weapons end up being extremely powerful for the hunter rank they're at. In fact, they end up being among the most powerful weapons of the game, as far as I can tell. Even though they're only going to be like hunter rank, you know, four or five or six. Whereas, you know, the highest in the game go up to twelve. My. Yeah. Just one of those things. And you just got to keep unlocking, like, every 100 style rank or so once you get past 100 will unlock, like, basically another level. No, it's not one for one, but around there. Mm -hmm. Have you fought any particular crazy hardcore monsters? Um, I mean, the most interesting stuff... Let's see... I mean, Kieran is probably the scariest, I suppose. Because he, he gets hard enough already in the higher ranks anyway. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the more hardcore or gene rank you fight him, the more he teleports <laughs> and just has no no place left in normal history or life or anything. Like, he becomes the DeLorean. <laughs> like, teleporting and backflipping all over the place. Uh, and it's, it's scary, you know? I mean... They essentially compensated for the fact that he used to be the most easily farmed monster in the game. Uh, there was a uh, certain area in the snowy mountains where you'd be able to kind of like hide in a tunnel right. and shoot at him with impunity. And as a result, I think they started giving him more and more attacks that just home in on you no matter where you are. <laughs> I like that. To the point where that's all he ever does is just use homing attacks on you constantly. So unless you're constantly evading at exactly the right moment, you're probably going to die. <laughs> I did die many times. I mean, I've rage quit um, a fair number of times in that game. <laughs> you know, that's very embarrassing. I mean, because you know, it takes it can take a while to get a group together, and some groups are very transient. You know, you can be spending five to ten minutes to find a group, and then they'll do one quest and you do okay, but then they leave anyways. So you know, then you're at the point where I, all right, we finally got a group together. We're in this quest, and then like you die once. And you're like, okay, that happens. <laughs> like every mistakes happen. You die again. You're like, oh, I'm getting a little angry here. And he'll die like a third time, the quest will fail, and just like totally just like palm slam the power button on your computer. You're like, screw this! I hate this game! We're never playing it again! <laughs> then you get a hack stun, and you know, play with another people, and you sit there and you cry. It's cheating. You get a serious bet, take out payday loans, and order to pay for your front. That is good. It's bad um, No, I mean, honestly, like, the, the more people you have to play the game, the funner it's going to be. Like, you know, we're slowly building a. a bigger English community. I mean, MindGuard has been around forever, but there's a lot of people in the guild that are really high-ranked, and it's like, really, you know, 
we can't expect them to come down and help out all the noobs. Right. So, you know, the the more people we get into it, the more people we get along the gradient of the pipeline of, you know, from 0 to 100 rank 999, mm-hmm. um, the better time we're all going to have. I mean, there's one way to alleviate that, is that if you're a hunter rank anywhere between 1 and 31, um, you can be adopted by people as, like, their newbie um, while you're at that level because you give them bonus oh, to right. a style rank. And uh, at your lowest level style rank, that might make it worth it to do quests for that person. Isn't there also like a mentor mentee thing? Um, there might be. Um, not that I know of exactly. I mean, outside of the uh, Rasta, you know, clone hunter system, which is of course that can end up being very powerful. If you get a really good Rasta, I mean, that could be. I mean, nothing will ever be good as the hack. You know, the, the Hackster Rasta, the uh, Pay Rasta. But, you know, you can get pretty powerful in terms of the amount of paralysis you get off and stuff like that. Right. I think uh, I remember reading something about a uh, mentor mentee thing where a higher, higher rank person can get a lower rank person. And then um, I think m- maybe after the lower rank person increases their hunter rank, the. Uh, both of them get some sort of bonus, like the low rank person might get some ore that might be hard to get at low rank, and then the high rank person gets tickets or something. That's something that I want to do. Will you adopt me? Yeah, I'll adopt you. Sure, I'll take a, I'll take a you know mostly grown man child in my home. <laughs> Sit around. You we were stuff? joking about that, like you know, you know, most people like they sometimes end up with a stepdad. What if you ended up with a Shep dad? <laughs> and like, you know, like I'm not really married to anyone, but like I just show up at your house. You know, I, I talk to you sometimes. Like you find me. I'm like always hanging out playing Monster Hunter. Are you Mr. Yeah. Bojangles? Like I pull up, pull up a list of chores. Like the list of chores is like, you know, get, get me some honey and <laughs> farm me up 10 hunter ranks. And I come back and you land me up eight hunter ranks. And I'm just like really disappointed in you. Oh. Would you send me to my room without food? Or would you send me onto a quest without food? I would send you on quests without well done steaks <laughs> or energy drinks. I'd be like, you know, you, you go on that quest and you, you beat that that Kieran without any pellet shots. That's your punishment for the weekend. <laughs> Which isn't too hard. I mean, you just use a sword and shield. I guess it's not that bad. Oh, Shep Dad. Um, I don't care what you say, Shep Dad. You're not my real you're not, Shep Dad. You're not my real Shep Dad, <laughs> Shepherd. <laughs> and I'll be like, I'm the only chef dad you ever had. No, no. I'm the only chef dad that cares. I would find Brad Galloway. <laughs> Brad Galloway would probably be a better shepherd dad than me. He he's, he's probably the only other chef dad out there. He hunts he, his he, kids. He, yeah, he he literally is a chef dad. He is a shepherd dad. <laughs> I only have like adoptive like fans of the podcast children. He's got like real living, breathing, screaming, crying children. Get, and then and then we help them kill a, t- a tigrex. And then he gets disappointed because he didn't get the cards he wanted. Yeah, the, yeah. The son's like, Dad, like, Dad, why didn't get the cards? And the dad's kind of like sitting on a heavenly, like, <laughs> Ooh. Uh, uh, you didn't see that. Send a box. See that. Um, all right, so I think that's going to be it for today. We're not going to go too too long. We don't have uh, Christian or or Nick, so we're not going to drag anything out any farther than it needs to be. Um, any last questions, Noxilla, or should we just wrap it up? All right. I have one more question that pertains to Freedom Unite. Okay. So this is from Sven88 from Formspring, and he recently bought a PSP in Freedom Unite, and he wants to know what a good starting set for Gunner and Blademaster are. Oh, like before high rank? Like just starting out right away? I think so. Uh, if I remember correctly... The Blaganga Light Bowgun is a pretty good choice to start off with because it has a high amount of normal 2 and a fairly decent amount of attack power. I would go for that first. As for a good starting armor set, I can't remember off the top of my head what would be decent. I mean, usually at that level, you know, you can kind of look for things. If you can find anything that has normal attack up plus the other one there, go with that. I you think uh, the battle set is not bad. It has, I think it has speed sharpened, uh, psychic vision, and maybe attack. Well, what would be the uh, um, corresponding skills for a gunner set with the battle set? 
I'm uh, pretty sure it'd be the same, except maybe speed speed reload. A reload plus one? Oh, eh, I don't know like if that'll that. help. Yeah, it's not bad. You know, I mean, uh, maybe the Kaku set, I guess, Kaku set plus the Buganga. Mm. Because I know the, the Kaku set has attack up. Yeah. Uh, I mean, early on, don't don't worry too much about armor skills in this game. Because they're, they're much harder to come around in Unite than they are in Try or Portable 3rd. You don't have decoration. I mean, you don't have uh, talismans to equip. Right. So you're not going to be getting the crazy amount of skills that you did before. I mean, of course, as you get into G rank, you're going to get a lot more things going on. But early on, just you know, focus on getting a gun that has a decent amount of shots of the type that you want. You know, if you have the time to grind, and you're not using other weapons, then go ahead and make the elemental versions of the guns. But otherwise, just don't. You know. You know, increases in power are incremental at best. Mm-hmm. There's there's no massive jumps anywhere along the line. So as soon as you get up the next hunter rank, maybe make a new hunt. You know, do it nine times. Make a new armor set and make a new weapon every nine ranks or so. Make uh, make the cat bow gun, or just make the cat everything. You can actually the cat helmet's not a bad choice. It's got bomb strength up. That would be pretty decent for a gunner. Yeah, and the cat bow gun actually has rapid fire, and I. It has a pretty good clip size for fire and normal, too. Oh, okay. So just make everything cat, and you'll be good to go. Be a cat. Okay. All right, so I think that's it for this episode. Uh, right around now, I am going to pop up all the ways for you to uh, contact us. You know, there's email that I never check, Formspring that Noxella checks, the socialdistance.com website where you can find me on a fairly regular basis, at least on the weekend, in the IRC channel, as well as a message board that people post uh, various little get-togethers and things on. Yeah, uh, You can use uh, our Twitter. Usually we update that, or somebody updates that whenever there's an update to the podcast. And then, of course, you can always message us on YouTube. Um, in the near future, I'm going to be trying to make sure that I synchronize things across both YouTube and Blip TV. Uh, I've been fairly busy with my new job, and I guess now is as good a time as any to say that we could probably expect releases every two weeks instead of every week. No. At least, well, until Christian can kind of help us when we start season two, which will probably be around episode 100, <laughs> 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 or whatever that is. Um, I'm just going to say, you know, look for it every two weeks rather than every week. You might get extra stuff in between, but until then, I don't want people to get their hopes up and then be shattered when it isn't out every Thursday or Sunday or Saturday or whenever I happen to release it. Give me my podcast. Okay. Maybe. Well. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, this is Shepard saying uh, good luck, have a good hunt, and until next time... You're not my real Shep dad. Wunderbar! Yeah! <laughs>